Today, we're going to be addressing Cardano addresses. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we break it down, but don't dumb it down, taking a look at Cardano. Today, we're talking about Cardano addresses, what they are, how they work, um, how they may be secure or insecure, depending on the type. So with that, let's take the deep dive. So there are two types of addresses in Cardano, mainly for holding ADA. There's the enterprise address. This is a simple payment only address. It cannot be used for staking. Uh, I think originally it was designed to be used by exchanges and other large wallets. Uh, there's also the staking address. And this is a combined payment and staking key all in one. And it can be used for staking to a pool. So most addresses in your Daedalus or your Roy wallet are staking ad addresses. So how do we get an address? Well, you've heard that your wallet holds keys and it holds two types of keys. It holds a public key that is used for verification and it holds a private key that's used for signing and used to spending from an address. To create an address that can be sent ADA, the public key is hashed and turned into the address. So let's take a look at how that happens. So we're gonna use the command line here to go ahead and generate a public private enterprise key. And so you'll see we're generating a V key, which is the verification key, and the S key, which is the signing key. And these are ED25519 keys. You can do your own research, look up a little bit more about that. We may address that in a future video. But essentially, it comes down to just being a blob of bytes. Here we're showing it as Cbor hex. And let's take a look at what it looks like when we kind of dig down and decode this stuff. So if we go to cbor.me, their uh, website allows you to decode Cbor. It's a binary format. And in this case, it's kind of like JSON, but it's, it's binary uh, where there's no names, there's just values in, in the blobs. So you'll see it started with 5820. Over here, 5820, 5820. Um, and the 5820 is just a keyword that says, hey, there's 32 bytes coming after this. And so if you just remove that 5820 at the beginning, you get what the actual key value is in hex. So let's break it down further. If we take that, uh, that binary value in hex, we pass it through XXD to convert it into actual binary from hex. And then we pass it to a program called B2SUM, which does a Blake 2B um, checksum on it. The length is 224 for this particular conversion. We let it know we're in binary mode and then we remove any junk that we don't need from the output. We need just the, the 56 hex bytes and you see we get this ED7D value. And so that's, that's if we do this conversion from uh, public verification key into address manually. Let's see what happens when we use the Cardano CLI tools to do the same thing. If we pass it through the address build command, we give it our, our verification key and we pass the mainnet flag, you'll see we get, get out this um, ADDR1 value. And those should be pretty familiar to you. Those kind of show up in Daedalus or Uroi. But this one is shorter, so it's an enterprise address. And it's also encoded in the BEC32 format. BEC32 is an encoding that's used in all kinds of crypto. You may be familiar with the BC1 Bitcoin addresses. Um, so BEC32, you have kind of a header, which is normal text, a divider, which is always the number one. And then you have a bunch of other characters that get decoded into... Um, the, the actual binary address value. So if we run that through a BEC32 decoder, you'll see that we get 61 and then, oh, surprise, it's our ED7D value after that. So what is this 61? So 61, the six means it's a an enterprise address. The one means it's mainnet. So if we run the same key, the same V key, but this time past testnet, 
for our parameters, we get a slightly different address out. You'll notice we have a different header. It's adder underscore test one. And then everything else looks different. But when we decode it, we actually get the same ED70 value, except this time it has six zero. So zero means it's coming from a test net. This prevents you from spending testnet ADA on the mainnet and mainnet ADA on the testnet. So next let's take a look at stake addresses and these are a little longer and you'll be familiar with them because they show up in in Daedalus. Here I've got a screenshot of a, a Daedalus wallet and you'll also notice this scary privacy warning up here. It says please note all your receiving addresses include your stake key. When you share it if somebody knows your state key, they can look at the blockchain and they can see any payment address associated with that given state key. So they will know the entire whole balance of your wallet. So that's just something important to note. So let's break these down. If we BEC32 decode these, you'll see uh, for, if we've got the first two here are mainnet addresses, which are just the ones above here. If we BEC32 decode those, you, they start with zero, 01. So the zero at the beginning means it's a staking address, and the one, of course, again means mainnet. Uh, the testnet ones, if we break those down, you'll see they are zero, 00, which means staking address and testnet. So what do we what do we do if we want to protect our privacy? And this is kind of a contrived example, but it's to kind of show that you can break these addresses apart into their component parts. So you noticed on this previous screen, if we looked at um, these first two addresses, the second half of it starts with FF57, FF57. And so th that is the staking part of the address and they are exactly the same for all the addresses in a given wallet. And that's why we, we don't yet have um, stake portfolios where you can delegate to multiple stake pools, but that's how they'll do that in the future is is they will give us, you know, maybe a set of addresses for one stake pool and then a set of addresses to use for, you know, maybe a second stake pool. But right now they're all pointed at the same staking address and so you can only stake to one pool at a time. So if we want to receive a private payment, what if we just want to extract out just that payment key and strip off the staking address so we're kind of hidden. So if we BEC32 decode an address that's already in our wallet, and then we copy off just the part of it that is that uh, payment key or payment address part, and then if we um, add in the header 61 for mainnet, uh, the one for mainnet and the six for enterprise address, and then we re-encode that with the header ADDR, we get an address out of it. And that address is not visible anywhere inside of our wallet. But if I send two ADA to that, this is using Jor Manager to send two ADA to that particular address, you'll see from the screenshot on the right here that that two ADA did arrive in the wallet. Um, it is not staked to any pool, even if that, that wallet was staked to a pool, but it's still held by the wallet by those private keys there. And so I hope this gives you a better understanding of how addresses work in Cardano. And with that, nerd out.